In this special edition of tutorials, we will create a motion study for our minifigure. Discuss why motion studies are important and how we can practically use them. See how a motion study can be used for other projects like a piston assembly and so much more. Welcome to the Learn It channel, lesson 10i. So the first thing we do with a motion study is go to our toolbar and we are going to select the drop down assemble menu and select motion study. There it says performs kinematic motion analysis based on joints. Select the joints to participate, then specify points and values for the motion. So if you haven't done so already, you will need to go back and watch lesson 10G on assembly and motion. And this is because you will learn all about how to create joints. If you do not have joints, a motion study will not work for you. So I've linked uh, the lesson 10G on the top of the screen. Click it if you haven't watched it already, and then come back to this lesson on motion study after. So let's go to our motion study. So our motion study dialog box looks just like this. And we need to select joints to animate. So this is our main window where we will adjust our joints in the animation. And then on the bottom, We'll have just like our DVD player. We've got restart, previous step, next step, and play. And then our mode, we can just play once. We can play forward, backward, and we can play it on a loop as well. We adjust our speed. Now, this is a huge thing. I'll mention it right now. Very important to remember is whenever we create a joint, it's best to go OK, and that saves our motion study. Sometimes I've gone ahead and created all of the joints to animate and then Fusion crashes. That never happens with Fusion 360, does it? Yeah, every once in a while, every blue moon does a Fusion 360 crash. No, uh, it's best to save often with Fusion 360. And for anyone out there who's starting to learn Fusion 360, save often or learn the hard way. So. Let's dig into it. First of all, again, we've created all our joints in the past. We've created the head to torso, waist to torso, left leg to waist, and so on. So what we're going to do is start with the head to torso. Now you can see that there is a curve, an animation curve or line that spans the distance of this window. On the bottom, you will see what are called steps. We start at zero we end at 100. Now, what are we going to do here to create some animation? Well, our first step is going to stay at zero. Our next step, and we can click really anywhere because we can edit it after, but let's just click here, for example, and you will see that there's an angle and a step. Well, let's go to 45 degrees, and our step is going to be at 40. So as soon as I do that, you can see that the minifigure's head turns to the left. And now we can play it, actually. Let's just turn down our speed. There we go. So his head moves to the left. Let's go loop. Head moves to the left and restarts. Great. So for my particular animation, as you've seen on the outset of this video, is he looks to the right. Well, how do we make him look to the right? Well, we're going to click on our step point here, and instead of going 45 degrees positive, we're going to go negative 45 degrees. There we go. Now he's looking at us. Let's press play. There he is. Perfect. Okay, so let's keep on going here. I'm going to click again further down the line of the motion study, and here I'm going to step back to angle of 0 and 80 for my step, and let's play this. So he's going to look and then look straight. Look at the camera, look straight. Perfect. There he goes. And our last step automatically defaults to 0 and 100. It will just leave it at that. That's great. Now let's go on to our next motion. Let's go right leg to waist. So here we've got another motion study line, animation line. And let's add some angles and some steps to this. So I'm going to click first of all here and for our angle let's go 25 degrees at a step of 20. Great. 
Let's just click another one. And again, we can click anywhere here. We don't have to try and find the exact point that we're looking for. Prove it to you. I'm just going to click all the way over there. And let's go negative 25 and 60 for my step. There we go. And we'll just click another one here. Let's go 0 and 80. Oops. 0 tab 80. There we go. All right, let's see what this looks like. So as you can see, his right leg is now moving back and forth, but it's not an even swing. It's a back and then straight down and he holds it there. Great. Okay, so now let's do our left leg. Let's click on that. We've got our animation line again. And here we're going to, we want to create some sort of lifelike animation as much as we can with this motion study. So let's do that here with our left leg. We're going to go to uh, zero degrees and step at 30. And then we'll go negative 25 and 50. And then we'll go 25, 90. And then back to zero and 100. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Great, so now we've got kind of a little bit of a walking motion. It's right leg front, back, and then it stays still. Great. Okay, let's go now to the right arm to torso. There we go. So make sure that the line comes up and you can see it off to the distance here. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is a good point to press OK and save. Motion studies will come up in our browser, so we can expand that. I've got three motion studies. The last one I have been working on is this one. So let's go edit. There we go. So our right arm to torso is just an even line. So let's change this. Let's go there, and we're going to go zero on our angle, step at 15. All right, to the next one here, let's go 20 and 40. So you can see a preview of his arm, it moves forward. Our next step and angle, let's go 0 and 65, and then 0 and 100. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Great, so here his right arm just has a very gentle movement. And you can see that here with the line, it goes forward, up, a little bit of an angle down, back to normal and then straight through, just holding it steady. Okay, so now the left arm to torso. This is where he's gonna do that little waving motion. So let's click on that. And here he's gonna lift his arm right away and it's going to be, well, let's go step at five and then minus 130. Let's do that. We'll keep it going along that uh, motion just keeping his arm at the same position the same angle so let's go minus 180 and then we will go all the way back here 0 and 90 great so let's see what this looks like great there we go and you can see that the joint actually on our palette that we're working with that's highlighted in the motion study is active. That just shows you the joint that we're working with. Perfect. Now let's do our left hand to arm joint. And let's create a little bit of a waving motion here. So this is going to be the most complicated of them, of our motions. Let's go zero and 35, minus 30, 45. 30 and 55, minus 30 and 65, 30 and 75, and zero and 85. Okay, so let's see what happens here. There we go, his little hand is just a waving. It's awesome. Okay, so now we want a little bit of motion with his right hand as well. So let's just pause that and create another one, right hand to arm. And this again is just gonna be a tiny little motion, so let's keep it at zero, angle 30, step. Next one, minus 20 and 40, 
0 and 50, and then 0 and 100. Okay, let's put this all together. So we can see his right hand is just a little, little tiny little movement, natural movement here. Very good. We've got a complete motion study. So we can actually take off certain um, lines here if we want. The motion continues, but this is just to give a little bit more clarity if we're working on individual joints or motion. So there we go. We've created a motion study. So let's go OK. And right now, he's in a different position, so we can revert back to normal, fit him in the screen, and there we go. So what is the purpose of motion studies? Well, it helps us to see that the joints that we've created are functioning properly. It helps us to see any errors or any collisions, and it provides a quick animation for us to see that everything we have created is functioning properly. So we can also use that for non-minifigure projects. For example, this piston assembly. Let's just open up our motion studies here. Now, the interesting thing about this motion study is I've only created one motion with one joint. Let's see if all of our components here are running properly. Just gonna turn that speed down, loop it. Well, there we have it. So if I have made all my joints accurately and properly, then a motion study, even with one item in the whole motion study, it will show us that the entire assembly is functioning properly. So this is a great way to see, are there errors, are there restrictions that you have uh, not considered? Uh, does our assembly or our model break? That helps us to give a good indication to fix it before we move on to any future steps. Well, I hope that you've benefited from this tutorial. If you have, please consider subscribing, smashing that like button, hitting the notification bell, commenting below as well. If you've benefited from this in any way, I'd love to hear from you. If you would like a homework assignment, please design your own type of motion with the minifigure or create something like our piston assembly here. Uh, create anything that has simple motion. Start simply. Uh, start with only one or two joints and then move up from there. Work on your motion study. Figure it out. Tell me your successes. Tell me what you've benefited from this and any other applications uh, that you've seen that uh, perhaps the Learn It channel could benefit from as well. So thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you at the next tutorial. Take care.